welcome back. And uh, today we are going to talk about um, the most common tasks that you will use when you are on the help desk um, as an assistant, as a system administrator, which is really working with uh, computers and users most of the time. All right. So um, now that we have installed the Active Directory, we can go directly either to tools and you'll see that the administrative uh, active directory center and active directory users and computers so that's what we're going to use most of the time but this is really an old way of well since you're going to be using it a lot it is best to really take this and pin it to the taskbar to make it easier the active directory administrative center is more advanced and this is for really an enterprise network and it's beyond the scope of this um, this lecture so we'll be using the old old meaning still around from the 2008 using the active directory users and computers so the first thing that i really want to do is i want to pin this uh, right onto the taskbar so what i do is i'll go to the um to the start and um, I'll go down in here when I see the active directory users and computers. I'm going to right click and I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. All right, and I'll hit escape and I'll see it right here. So when I click on it, uh, the computers and the, there you go, it will come up immediately. You could have done that by going to the, uh, the tools menu the same way. So now that you have it on the taskbar, It'll be much easier to work with since this is going, you're going to be doing maybe I'll say 90% of your work is going to be within this um, folder the active directory users and computers. All right, so since we are in there, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to be adding users and computers, but there's another way of doing it, a really old way of doing it. So let's say you don't want to use the GUI. And you can do this with the within Microsoft. Go back to start, just right in here on the on the desktop itself, just start CMD on the command prompt. And you can actually use command prompt command line interface to add computers and users. And the command is ds um uh, let's see uh DS add. DS, that's right. DS add space one slash question mark. All right. And there is your uh, command. So you can actually, if you scroll up, scroll up a little bit, you can see DS add computer, contact group, and so on. All right. So here's your first print screen. So print screen this. By the way, I'm going to ask you some questions at the end of the lecture. So I'm, all right. So in addition to the print screens, but all the answers are going to be within this video. So, um, in addition to the print screens. So, anyway, this is really an old way of doing it. Nobody really adds computers or groups or users using the command line interface. We're all going to use, of course, the GUI. All right, so let me open this up. And and you can see that this is our XYZ local, the one that we created last time. This is our tree. Here are a whole bunch of different uh, organizational units within the XYZ.local. Uh, there is a build-in uh, groups. These are by default. Um, you can use them, put the administrators in there, you can add users in there. So we'll talk about that some other time. Computers, here's some built in computers. Well, there's nothing in there because we don't really have a network, so we can add all the different types of computers. The domain controller, of course, there's only one domain controller. You can have multiple domain controllers on your network. You can create another one and merge it in here, so you'll have several domain controllers in this tree. Uh, the, foreign, uh, the foreign security principles and the uh, and the managed service accounts, really, we're not going to do much of it in this course. This is, again, beyond the, uh, the scope of this course, but uh, we don't have to worry about that much. We're not going to do much of it anyway. And here is the big folder that you need to worry about. Here's a whole bunch of different users. There's the administrator. There's only really two users that are created. 
the administrator, which has all the rights, everything, a all powerful administrator cannot be changed or deleted. So that's the, the old good old, that, that's the one that you want in with. And there's a guest user in here that is created for you. And uh, if you see that little arrow, downward arrow right here on the guest user, this is just to show that this user is inactive, is disabled, really. Uh, and it's probably a good idea to leave it disabled. And I don't even know why Microsoft has this guest user. If you want to create a user temporarily, you just can create them and you can put attributes on it that can be, you know, that, that account can be disabled at any time within 24 hours if you want to. But anyway, it's there regardless. All right, so let's say you wanted someone asked you to create a user. So you right click on the user's uh, organizational unit and you go to new and you want to bring out the user, create a user. And let's say the first name is going to be John and her last name is Doe, John Doe. And you can see, build it up, John Doe. Actually, the J should be capital letter, okay? John Doe. And their username, they're going to be able to sign in as uh, first letter of their first name, J, last name Doe. And it'll be at XYZ. And pre-2000 pre servers, uh, you don't even have to worry about that because there's not really much for you to do within there. So, and that's what they've allowed you on this. So you got to be very careful. What if Jane Doe signed in? So you have to have some sort of um, a process, maybe Joe, J Doe 1, J Doe 2, they have, because it's you know, probably if it's a common name. All right? So you got to make sure that uh, you take care of that as well because they have to be unique. All right, so you click on next. Now, here you have to type in a password, and it says the and by default, it says the user must change a password on the next logon. So you can write in a common password, let's say whatever the password you want it to be. Uh, maybe it's the name of the company. Okay. You can click on that. You can say, you can choose. Well, you can't do that. See? If you choose, you cannot change the password, and you must change the password at the same time. So if you don't want them to change the password that you give them, so unclick that, then you can click that they cannot change the password. Uh, or you can say the password never expires. That's probably not a good idea. Or you can disable the account, by the way, if you need. So if you know a specific user, you want your account to be disabled. You can create everything and just make sure it's disabled. They can get in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just for now, I'm just going to leave that the user must change the password on the next logon. Okay, so click on next. It says, okay, blah, 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 it's all good. And click on finish. Uh, oh, the password did not mean. So let me create a password that means the standards. Eight characters, capital letters, and numbers. Okay, let's make sure it matches and click on next. Isn't that beautiful? The passwords do not match. Now it should match. There you go and finish and now we got the user John Doe created. All right so uh, that's a typical task that you would do if you are on a desktop and your boss asks you to create a user and uh, give them a password. Let's say um, now I can go to John Doe. Let me see, just one more thing. If you go to properties on the user, actually what I was doing then, it must have been on if you go to the user, Joe John and Joe again. Now this is what I want. Now you see a lot more tabs in here on its properties. Okay. 
and we went to this account. This is where actually you have to click in a log in hours and uh, a log on to which computers you're going to log on to. The profile. But you can do a lot of things. Uh, most of the time you're going to be working right out of this account itself. Okay. You can unlock account right out of the account. So if I asked you how do you unlock an account? You will have to go to the properties itself and go to the account tab and this is where you can unlock an account. So if you know somebody that's been uh, dismissed and you are told to unlock their account, you immediately go to that user, right click, go to properties, click on the account tab and unlock it. If, they are, if you were asked to uh, reset somebody's password, let's say John Doe called you and said, um, I need my password to be reset. So you go right click, and it's right here. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't go to properties to reset somebody's password. It's right click right here. All right, so that's, that's how you reset password uh, for a user. Uh, let's say, uh, let me go back to properties. And you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tabs. But you could actually do a little bit more than that if you can go to view and uh, you can go to advanced features. You can see now now you have a lot more. Um, organizational unit. Now if I go to users and I go to John Doe, there's additional users in here also. And I go to properties and I have a lot more tabs. Right? There's about uh now there are eighteen of them. So you could do a lot more. But you don't need that many anyway. So let me just go back to view and uh uncheck the advanced features. Okay, let me go back to users. And let's say, here's another thing that I want you to do. Uh, let's say you are, the 50 users are in the sales department and you need to create users for them, user account. So the best thing is to create a template. How do you create a template? You go back to users and uh, you go to new and go to a user and just put underscore sales. Uh, underscore user and your last name is so and uh, it's going to be uh, the username will be underscore sales uh, underscore user all right and then you can go and click next Type in a genetic password for them. And user must change their password. So everybody's going to change their password. And then you can add finish. And there it is. It goes on the top. And now you can, you know, within this template, if you go to the properties, you can go to Fill in all the goodies that you want, the account, what time they can log on, uh, which computers they can log on to, fill in all the goodies that are going to be common to everybody in the uh, in the uh, in the sales department. And what what members of they are in, that you could put them in there. You know, what if they are a member of the um, they should be a member of the sales um, container right so add them all in there and so now for the next member all you have to do is do right click and copy right and copy and just put in when you once you do a copy you all you have to do is put in their name last name and the username and just hit next boom boom and there you go there'll be a copy of everything that you need to do and you just do the next one and so on right if let's say you had John Doe is in the sales department you know, you could do that too. You could do right click copy. But the problem with that is, what if John has was a member of another department? You get a, let's say he's the part of the engineering department as well. So that's not a good idea. Don't really just copy someone else's uh, 
uh, change his name because all you have to do is you can rename John Doe and give him make sure it's uh, Jane Doe for example and look what happens as soon as it comes up here Jane Doe we gotta change our first name to Jane and you know and we could do that too but remember if you change somebody's name let's say somebody left and we know that uh, all the parameters, all the properties, including members of what containers they are in, are the same. You can just rename that user if they, somebody left it and just want to give them same, uh, the same credentials. Uh, but typically that's not done. I don't do that. I usually create a template, and, uh, and that template will serve for all the users that are going to have common. Uh, properties within the, um, the organization. Okay, so that'll be a good thing to do. So we talked about how to reset a password, unlock a password, create a template as well. So that's good. Uh, by the way, if you be, if, if if somebody leaves you, let's say John Joe leaves, you, it's probably a good idea to just disable their account. And so if they ever come back to work for you, you just re enable it unlock their account. If you delete somebody's account and when they come back and recreate them, uh, they're not going to have the same information um, as the old one because every account that you create, there is a SID that is created, a security identification folder. And uh, that security identification folder is going to be different than the old one. So uh, unless you know that that person is completely going to be out. So let's and then you completely take them out. Then you can delete them. But typically, usually, I I stay away from doing that. All right. So take a copy of this, and I want to make sure that you know how to create a template. So uh, this is really most of the tasks that you would do in terms of users: creating a user, resetting their password, unlock their uh, their account, creating a template for users. Okay. Uh, so here's question number one. All right. I want you to tell me what is the command to add users and computer in the command line. That's question number one. Question number two. Tell me the steps on how to pin the uh, the computers and users onto the taskbar. Question number three. Tell me. Write down. You write down under you know under those uh, uh, print screens that you have. In the Microsoft Word. Uh, so, question number three: What are the steps to create a new user? Uh, question number four: What are the steps to set someone's password? Step number. Uh, question number five: What are the steps to unlock an account for somebody? And uh, that's enough. I mean, if you could do those five, then you should be okay. So now you can actually, if you are on an interview and someone asks you, are you familiar with uh, Server 2012 within creating users? Then you say, of course, not only familiar, but now you're an expert. Okay? So uh, do those print screens that I asked you to do and answer those five questions on that Microsoft Word. Save that and upload that as your homework. All right, until the next lecture. I'll talk to you later.